Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I will tell about a trip to Sicily that I did with my girlfriend in October last year. We wanted to do this trip for quite a while so we finally decided and did it. The plane tickets were absurdly cheap so we said why not. What was special about our flight was that it was Nusha's first flight ever so it was even more interesting. After landing we took our rented uh, car and uh, went in our BMW in the city center practically. Uh, next day our real exploration of the city of Catania has begun. We woke up and the first thing we did was we had a nice uh, Italian uh, breakfast, of course brioche and uh, cappuccino, and uh, then we decided to see the city center. We parked the car near the city walls and just over the walls there is a fish market. The market was as crazy as one can imagine. There was yelling, there was ice all over the place, a million people all around. But it was nice to see the authentic fishermen and local people uh, participating in this uh, craziness. If you are wondering uh, why everybody is wearing face masks, it's because of the COVID restrictions, which were still uh, mandatory or obligatory. The masks were obligatory even outside. So. This will be a strange thing to remember for sure. On the main square, there is a St. Agatha Cathedral, which is like the main church in Catania. Very beautiful to see. There are even some tombs with some mummies on the display inside. So we did a quick tour and saw all of that. Uh, another very interesting thing on the main square is the elephant statue, which is right in the center of the main square. I don't really know what it means, but I think it has something to do with Africa because Sicily is connected uh, historically to Africa. Then from the main square, we proceeded uh, on the main street towards the north. Uh, the main street is called Via Etnea, uh, like the Etna street. And you can see the Mount Etna in the background on the end of the street. On the main street, we saw a part of a old Roman amphitheater. There is only a part of it because it's in the middle of the city. It's just, it is surrounded by buildings. So they didn't excavate all of it. They excavated just a part of it. And uh, the other parts are still under the buildings, I believe. But it's quite hectic. Uh, there is traffic all around it. But uh, a nice thing, an interesting thing to see on the main street. Then we stopped at a bar on the main street, on the Via Atnea, and we had a nice uh, Sicilian cannolo, which is a dessert. Uh, it's like a, a roll uh, full of cream. On the top there is chocolate or, or pistacchio or whatever. So we took uh, two of them with pistacchio. I must say it was quite good, too sweet maybe for my taste, but it's definitely something to try. After eating the dessert, we went on the other side of the street. There was a nice big garden or a park with a lot of flowers. We did a quick walk around the park, uh, shot a few pictures, and then we returned on the main street and uh, went back to the main square. On the main square, there is a bar called Bar Duomo, which has very good arancini. Arancini are like a traditional Sicilian food, like a bowl of rice, which has been fried afterwards. So it's a very a very interesting thing to try. We then proceeded towards our goal for the first day, which was the city of Siracusa. Siracusa is a city uh, a little bit south from uh, Catania, like a one hour drive. The roads in Sicily are quite strange, uh, at, at places overgrown, at places full of holes, but in general, you can get everywhere you want. Overall, the roads are okay. You just have to pay extra attention not to <laughs> fall into any holes or <laughs> stuff like this. In Siracusa, we checked in a hotel and then went for a walk in the city center. We walked across the island of Ortigia, which is an island in the center of Siracusa. It's very interesting. We saw a lot of beautiful old buildings. We saw many squares, many fountains. We took a few videos of them. The main attraction on the island is Aretusa Fountain, which is a spring of clean water in the middle of uh, the buildings. It's in fact an old well with springs of fresh water inside. Nowadays it's overgrown with, with plants and stuff, but a very interesting thing to see nevertheless. Then we checked out the beach nearby. The sea is just like 10 meters away, so we went to check out the water. We even put our feet in the sea to check the temperature. For me, it was fine. For Nusha, not as much. <laughs> then we stopped for dinner. We had two nice pizzas for the dinner. Uh, and that was it for day one. We were quite tired in the evening and we couldn't wait to go to sleep. The second day began once again with a traditional Italian breakfast, uh, cappuccino and brioche. Then we rented two bikes in a hotel that we stayed in and then went to see a very beautiful bike road on an abandoned railway which connects uh, Siracusa and Tarja, uh, that is a city to the north. 
the abandoned track is very interesting because it still has the electric pillars near it, even if there is no wires. Because it was once a railway, it's very easy to pedal. There is no incline practically. So it's very easy to pedal. On this road, there are very beautiful views on the sea because it, the abandoned track follows the coastline. Uh, it was a perfect sunny day with 22 degrees outside. So it was just like perfect weather for activities. We unfortunately didn't have our sport clothes with us because of the baggage limitations. And uh, we just brought the essentials and uh, no sport clothes, unfortunately. <laughs> but it was okay nevertheless. We spent two hours there and we loved it. Were we tired after that? Absolutely not. So then we decided to ride our bikes back to the city center. In the city center, we did a quick tour around a very special church, which is like a triangular in shape. A uh, very interesting thing to see, I'd say. Uh, we were a little bit hungry and I've heard from my friends who visited Sicily before that uh, we should stop at the Borderi Paninoteca, which is like kind of a fast food, but it's not really a fast food. It's more like a traditional local foods all gathered in one place and served in paninis. So we went there and ordered a sandwich. It was absolutely crazy how good it was. They use uh, local products only and the amount of stuff they put inside their panini is just insane. They have everything from local to cherry tomatoes to local cheeses, including mozzarella, stracciatella, pecorino, meat products, prosciutto, dry meats, all kinds of vegetables, spices, dips, everything. It was really delicious. I would recommend everyone to get one. After this extra good snack, we decided to go to see the Neapolis archaeological site. It's practically a big area of ruins from Roman and Greek area. The entry fee was 15 euros a person. A little bit expensive, but okay, it's worth it. We first went to see the Ear of Dionys, which is like a giant cave over 40 meters tall. It's supposed to be man-made, but I don't quite imagine how they dug it in antiquity without the proper tools and everything, but it's supposed to be man-made. Its function was uh, reportedly a shelter from invaders. There is very echoey sound in there, so all the tourists are yelling at the walls and stuff. <laughs> After that, we saw the ruins of a Greek theater, which are uh, quite big. I imagine how beautiful it must have been in the antiquity. We also saw the Roman amphitheater, but it's not in as good condition as the Greek one. So altogether, we spent around two hours to see the whole Neapolis archaeological site. But uh, it was worth the time because it's very well preserved and well taken care of. So I'd recommend everybody to go see it. Then we went for dinner in La Pentea restaurant, Nusha Cho pasta al pistacchio con la pancetta and I ate pasta con gamberi e pistacchio. It was delicious. I will not say anything more. You should go there and try it. So that was it for the day. The day number three has begun on the road. We decided to visit the southeastern part of the island and the beautiful town of Ragusa. After almost two hours of driving, we reached the town, which is very picturesque. It's situated on a hill. So we parked the car, then we took a long walk through the town. So the town has a lot of nice viewpoints over the town itself, over the hills nearby and the surrounding valleys. The city was almost empty. There were absolutely no tourists. Because there were no tourists, it had like an original feel to it. We took a lot of nice pictures and a few videos and then proceeded further down towards the south, uh, towards the sea. The beach itself is uh, uh, about 25 kilometers away from the city, towards the south. And it's like a 20 minute drive. There are plenty of sand beaches. We chose one of them and stopped there. Uh, there we ate a snack and then we sunbathed for a while and then decided to try the water. So <laughs> I jumped in the water and I actually did a record. It was the only time that I swam in the sea in the end of October. After that, we chilled a little bit more and then we decided to drive back towards the north, towards the Etna mountain, which was our goal for the next day. So we found a nice cheap B&B on the base of Etna. And finally, the fourth day, the Etna day has begun. I couldn't wait for this day. Me and Nusha were both very excited because we haven't been on a volcano never in our lives before. 
We've never even saw a volcano from distance. Uh, we woke up in our room. Uh, our room was right under the Etna. We could see it from the balcony. We had a quick breakfast, the standard breakfast, cappuccino and brioche, of course. And then we started uh, our road towards Etna. The, the road is about uh, half an hour long, but there are few stops with very nice views. So obviously we stopped every now and then and took a few videos, took a few photos and etc. The views that day were magnificent. It was the best day of the week. Uh, the weather was absolutely phenomenal without any clouds. You could see the coastline and uh, Catania, just beautiful. Then we arrived to the parking near the Silvestri craters. We did a quick tour of the craters and then we didn't know how much further it is to the top. So we bought the tickets for the gondola and for the jeeps, which take you to the highest point that you can reach as a tourist. The tickets were 65 euros a person, so it's kind of a tourist trap. The landscape under Etna is like walking on the moon. It's all black. It's just magma and nothing else, just old lava. It's very unique, I'd say. It's very, it's very interesting. There are two main craters, the southeastern one and the Bocca Grande crater. The southeastern one is active and we could hear the rumbling and the hissing and uh, even uh, small eruptions of ash. But the Bocca Grande one is uh, dormant. They're about the same height, around 3,300 meters above the sea level. So we decided to go on the dormant one because it's uh, safer, I guess. The hike itself was about a half an hour long. The sand under the feet is so soft that for every step that you take, you fall half a step back. So it was quite challenging, but after uh, about half an hour, we reached to the top. The top of the Boca Grande crater is very wide and uh, there is a path that goes all around it. We also saw the, some other people on the rim, but we didn't walk the, all, the, all the way around. We just reached the top and then admired the beautiful, beautiful views on the southern coast of the Sicily. You could see practically half of the island of the Sicily from the top. The weather was just extra beautiful. There were absolutely no clouds. The visibility was above 100 kilometers, I think. You could see Taormina, you could see Catania, you could see the eastern coast, you could see the northern coast, you could see some cities on the north, you could see the center of the island. Another interesting thing is that the floor on the top of the crater was actually warm. So it was like floor heating. The, the floor must have had around 35 degrees Celsius, I'd say. A very, a very interesting thing to see, but a little bit scary at the same time because you think of the magma that is underneath. And there is, of course, the sulfur gas everywhere, which erupts from the floor. So you can't hang out on the top of the crater for very long because the gases are quite irritating to the lungs. So we did a few pictures, we shot a few videos, and then we decided to go down. To return down from the volcano, it's very simple because it's you just run downhill and in five minutes we were already at the bottom of the crater. Then we enjoyed the lunar landscapes once again and uh, returned on the main road which leads from the volcano. The hike down towards the parking was very easy and if we knew before we wouldn't buy the tickets for the jeeps and the gondola because it's a waste of money I think. When we arrived down to the parking, we admired the views for a little bit more and then we were pretty tired, so we went in our car and back to the our BMB. So for the day five, we have planned to visit the city of Taormina, which is another city or town on the eastern coast of the Sicily. So we had our standard breakfast of uh, brioche and cappuccino and then we started. It was about a one hour drive from Etna to, to Taormina. We parked the car and we did a standard uh, city tour by foot. We went on the main street. There are two doors on each, each uh, end of the city. The city is very picturesque. It's very touristic. There is a lot of souvenir shops. Uh, quite a lot of people were there. But uh, it's also one of the nicest looking places that we saw on Sicily because it has magnificent views on the eastern coast of Sicily. It's very romantic also. There are a lot of uh, old buildings. There is a beautiful church, typical Italian narrow streets, and everything is just beautiful about Taormina. There is also a Greek theater, which we didn't visit because uh, the entrance fee was quite high. Then from the city center, which is absolutely gorgeous, we went down to the beach. There is an island called Isola Bella, which means beautiful island in Italian. You can walk 
all the way to the island on the rocks. So we chilled on the beach for an hour or two, enjoyed the sun. Then we decided it's time to move on towards the north. Our goal for the day was the city of Milazzo on the northern side of the island. The inside of the island is uh, quite interesting. There are a lot of mountains, around, a lot of gorges, uh, creeks and stuff like that. It was interesting to see. The cities and villages are not as touristic as the coastal part, but uh, again, it's quite nice to see something authentic. We arrived in the city of Milazzo in the evening. Uh, it was already dark outside, so we just quickly checked in the hotel and then we went uh, for a quick dinner in the city. Then we returned in our hotel and uh, that was it for fifth day. Okay, and for the last day, the sixth day, we have planned the Aeolian Islands which are islands on the northern part of Sicily. There is a group of small islands. They're all volcanic, I think. Unfortunately, we had the time to visit just one island. Why did we choose Vulcano? Because it is the closest one and because it's the most famous one, I think. It also gave name to all the volcanoes on the world because the name Vulcano arrives from, this, from the name of this island, Vulcano. So we got up at 6.30 a.m. and we caught a boat that goes from Milazzo to the island. There is about 45 minutes of um, traveling time. Uh, when you arrive at the island, <laughs> you are attacked by a very strong smell. It smells like rotten eggs because of the sulfur, because very close to the docks are the sulfur springs and fumaroles and stuff, which have a very, very strong smell. When we got off the boat, we almost threw up because of that smell plus the masks that we wore because of the obligatory COVID uh, restrictions. Altogether mixed, it was not very pleasant, but okay. So near the docks, there is a small village and uh, we went in a store to buy a few sandwiches and water to, for the hike. The hike itself lasted for about an hour and 15 minutes. There are 300 meters of altitude difference, so it's not a hard hike. It's, uh, it's more of an easy hike. Vulcano is supposed to be a dormant volcano. The last eruption was like 500 years ago, if I'm not wrong. But uh, you can still see a lot of activity on the island. When we reach the top of the mountain, there is a nice circular path all around the crater, all around the rim of the crater, which we chose to walk. It takes about uh, half an hour. Uh, again, the views were very, very nice. You could see all the Aeolian islands. You could see the Sicily, you could see the sea, the village beneath, um, and we were just stunned. The views were absolutely beautiful. I would recommend everybody to go on this hike. Me and Nusha liked the views very, very much. So after that, we climbed down from the mountain. We visited a village for a little bit. Then we went on the beach. On the beach, there are a few pools, which uh, you have to pay to enter, but there is hot water inside and you can take a mud bath which we didn't take. Uh, we just went on a beach and enjoyed the beach for a little bit. There is a lot of sulfur uh, bubbles also on the beach coming from the sea, which is again very interesting. We chilled on the beach for an hour or so. We waited for the boat. From there, we caught a boat back to Milazzo. And uh, from Milazzo, we had about a three hour drive back to Catania. And uh, we went straight to the airport and caught our flight back to our home. So that was it for our trip to Sicily. I must say it's a very beautiful island. I would recommend everybody to go there, especially in the spring and the autumn, because in the summer it can get very hot. It's true that we only saw the eastern part of the island, but the Sicily is so big and we only had six days. So if we chose to go all over the island, it would be really too much because the island is too big and I think you need at least three weeks to travel all the island. So that was it for our travel. If you like the vlog, please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to see more of the vlogs, stay tuned and there will be more. So that's it for today. Thank you and bye bye.